How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. Being as this is episode 30, I thought that this would be a good episode to go in and review the stats of our soldiers. Leading the pack, we have Colonel Carlos Vexadon Carlos. 14 missions, 37 kills, thanks to his love of his rocket launcher and blaster launcher. We have Colonel Jammin' Dude. 13 missions, 23 kills. We have Colonel The Bodoc. 12 missions, 28 kills. We have Colonel Vexadon for the win. 10 missions, 20 kills. We have Major CHS Phantom. 11 missions, 13 kills. Tormentor Mafatu, another Major, 12 missions, 13 kills. Major Greg Draco, 11 missions, 14 kills. Major H. Kolari, 12 missions, 19 kills. Major Seamus Sanchez, 8 missions, 10 kills. Captain Flaming Skull, 9 missions, 12 kills. Captain Weedlepuff, 9 missions, 10 kills. Captain Batman, 9 missions, 16 kills. Lieutenant Captain K, 5 missions, 8 kills. Sergeant Draknon, 4 missions, 4 kills. And Major Mehizo Winslow, 11 missions, 24 kills. And I also owe Mihizo Winslow a great apology. As last mission, I kept referring to him as Mafatu. It's the blue hair. And both names starting with an M. So we have the Psylabs finished in four days. We have another group of Firestorms ready in 12. EMP cannons will be researched in three. We just came back from that crazy brawl where we basically had to fight all the enemy groups at once, so let's let some time pass. EMP cannons are complete. In developing an electromagnetic weapon capable of emitting a focused pulse that will penetrate the advanced alien shielding, we've also had to find the means to protect our own ship's sensitive electronic circu circuitry. The functionality of the weapon itself has already been well established by previous testing conducted by Earth's various terrestrial military forces, leaving us with little to determine outside of the energy requirements and effective range. Although the additional shielding required to protect our systems will necessitate a reconfiguration of our ship's hardpoints for the weapon mount, I expect the engineering team will have no problem fitting the device into position. If our pilots can successfully deploy the pulse against the alien craft, we should be able to bring down a UFO with minimal damage to the artifacts and equipment carried inside. The EMP cannon was developed in an effort to increase the chance of recovering functional alien technology from downed UFOs. Although the alien systems will be disabled, the EMP does not inflict physical damage to these components. After studying one of the small alien drone units, we believe that we could upgrade our arc throwers with the drone's robotic repair ability, allowing our soldiers to repair our shiv units in combat. Well, I don't use shivs, so that's not a big deal. Let's go ahead, since it's free. A mother variation on a previously identified specimen, this is the Heavy Floater. As you can see, the aliens have made substantial improvements to the armor and weapon systems available while removing some of its exposed vulnerabilities. An extremely dangerous combatant. Another variation on a previously identified specimen, this is the Heavy Floater. A cursory examination reveals substantial improvements to the armor and weapon systems available to the creature. Much of the ex exposed tissue, the floater's most obvious vulnerability, has either been shielded or removed entirely. With these modifications in mind, it would appear the aliens chose to move towards a greater reliance on mechanical and cybernetic upgrades rather than continue to developing the specimen's organic form. We may be able to gain further insight into this creature's unique abilities in combat if another specimen is targeted in the field in the unit analysis view. Our understanding of the alien materials grows. We believe that we could develop processes that would reduce the repair time of our fighter craft and shiv units significantly. Up next, 
one of my favorite toys. It's time for the Plasma Sniper. And the Scilabs are complete. Now the question becomes, who shall I put in first? We will put in first our three soldiers with the highest will. We got the Bodoc with an 81. Looks like for now we're gonna do the Bodoc, Carlos Carlos, and Vexadon for the win. Nope. Seamus Sanchez. The Bodoc, Seamus, uh, I don't want both, yeah, the Bodoc, Seamus Sanchez, I don't want both of our heavies in. We'll do a sniper, let's give it to Vexadon, he had the higher will of the two snipers. We can now submit our soldiers for testing within the Scilab. Once we have a complete report, I'll notify you with the results. Our current research implies a strong link between a candidate's willpower and their psionic potential. We're hoping that one or more of our existing soldiers will meet the necessary requirements. And really quick... Let's go back into here really quick and make sure... If these guys have any of our real equipment, which they do, let's unequip it all. Of course, with where I am financially, I could just about buy a separate piece of a set of gear for everybody now. We are basically at a point where money will not be an issue much longer. Okay. With that done, let's go ahead and advance time again. Plasma Sniper is complete! Perhaps it was inevitable that we would eventually be called upon to develop a weapon of this kind, just as we did with the advent of laser-based weapons. By concentrating our efforts on a single, focused discharge of plasma, and ignoring some of the previous design constraints regarding size, weight, and rate of fire, We've developed an extremely lethal long-range weapon. Our snipers will undoubtedly be pleased with this weapon's ability to devastate hostile targets from previously unheard of distances. In any case, this weapon is now ready for fabrication and engineering. By modifying our current power system to hold a greater charge, we've developed a plasma sniper rifle capable of delivering an extremely powerful shot that will greatly increase the odds of inflicting critical damage to hostile targets. We do not have the weapon fragments to do any other research. Let's go to engineering and we are going to build two plasma sniper rifles. And we will probably have an event here pretty soon. Next firestorms are finished. First stop, the hangar. We've got to transfer so that every continent has a firestorm. And we need to build three more plasma cannons. Let's go ahead and let time advance. We may be onto something, Commander. The first results of testing are done. Is different. Do we're we have up levels of results? energy unlike any we've detected in the previous tests. We looks like we have our first psionic soldier. Who will it be? Will it be the Bodoc? Will it be Sabus Sanchez? Or will it be Vexadon for the win? Stars, 
We have wondered what lies beyond. So very few have dared to look inward. The depths of the human mind hold more secrets than we can possibly imagine. How ironic that the means to defeat our enemy comes not through weapons or machines of war, but from the sea. And if we have succeeded, we will have gained a glimpse of what we are to become. We will have created something extraordinary. And it's Vexedon for the win! He is our first Psy Soldier! Oh my god, all three passed! Vexedon for the win! Seamus Sanchez and the Bodok! All gifted! Three id and three psionic soldiers. This mid time we will throw in Carlos Carlos, Jammin' Dude, and CHS Phantom. And let's teach everybody Mind Fray. I cannot believe that. I have never seen that before. It just shows how awesome of a bunch all of you are. And... Let's go to our new Psy Soldiers. Make sure they don't have anything important equipped. And they do not. Transfer Ship transfers complete. are done. Let's equip them all. Get plasma cannons on all of these ships. Equipping is done. Hmm. Not that we really need the money, These advancements but advancements could completely change the course of scientific progress. A new, untouched field of study just waiting for able minds. Do we not have an ethical obligation to prepare these soldiers for the changes, permanent changes, that they will experience? Mark it in the history books. This is the end of an era for mankind. Even after we've defeated the remaining aliens, what then? Have we sacrificed our own humanity for a taste of their technology? And if we manage to exploit this power further, do we risk being consumed by it, presumably just as they were? So we will do this. And we are going to go ahead Let's check the finance. No, not finances. Gray market. Do I have any damage stuff to sell? Yes. Go ahead, sell all that, as it's pretty useless. Let's go to the foundry. Nothing here I'm particularly worried about doing. Okay. There we go. We got a landed UFO. So, we are going to leave in our three psionic soldiers to get them started. And we will tag out others. We will go back to rotations after this, but we gotta get the Psy guys going. Uh 
Okay, so first let's equip our units here. Seamus Sanchez gets Titan Armor. Heavy Laser. Blaster Launcher. And a Skull. Exodon for the win. Archangel Armor. Plasma Sniper Rifle. And Scope. And the Bodok. Titan Armor. Plasma Rifle. Arc Thrower. Now we need a second Sniper. And we will bring Draconon. Give you Archangel Armor. A sniper rifle and a scope. We need a support. And for our support, we will bring. I believe it is the turn of. That's right, he's in. I was going to bring Phantom, but he's in. And Mahizo just went. So this is going to be Mithatu's mission. Titan armor. Plasma rifle. Medikit. Scoop. And let us grab one more assault. We'll bring Captain K for this mission. Titan armor. Plasma rifle. And apparently I need to make another scope. That's fine, it's not like they're exactly expensive. Go ahead and make a bunch of them, that way it's never a problem again. What am I doing? Contact detected. Okay. We are armed and ready. Strike one. Prepare for landing. We're moving into Argentina next. The threat there seems to be the most pressing. Reports indicate the UFO is set down in a sparsely populated area. We need to stay sharp and eliminate the invaders. We are not here to eliminate invaders. We are helping the local Girl Scout troop. We promised that we would deliver their cookies to the aliens. Everyone loves Girl Scout cookies. We're here with your Thin Mints. HQ, this is Big Sky. We are in position and awaiting further orders. Roger that, Big Sky. Strike one, you are green to deploy. Approach with extreme caution. Current enemy status at the site is unknown. We already have the UFO in sight. They're not coming out for their Thin Mints. Disappointing. Everybody loves Thin Mints. Up, up, and away. off the snipers. Position them. And we'll go ahead and overwatch with the pistols. And we've got something already. We got two mutons and a berserker. And I also heard a cyber disc. And one muton is already dead. 
Well then, shall we play, break in these lovely new plasma sniper rifles? I'd say they work well. Go ahead and try our first mind fray. Failed. Nefasu? Nice shot. Takes the berserker down. Switch Vexadon to the, for the win back to his sniper rifle. Vexadon picks off the Mutant. Leaving Captain K. And the Bodok to Overwatch. Here's the disc. Enemy spotted. Captain K, reaction shot. Misses. Ah, damn it. Here they come. And here comes a second cyber disc. That is not a pretty sight right there. Drachmon? Pegs one. Mifatsu. Let's see here. Let's get the other sniper first. And let him... I should have had him shoot first. Drakon actually needs the motions. He's down. One disc down. And that takes down a drone as well. And we still have in the zone. So we'll let him shoot the other one once. Does some good damage. Captain K... That is not where I wanted you. Finish it off. Nice shot. And the second disc is down. Fatu. Try to pick off that last drone. It's a miss. No way that just happened. Seamus Sanchez. You hit it. Seamus Sanchez finishes the last row. So this mission clearly going well so far. Now we have a group of heavy floaters. This is actually kind of perfect. Damn it! Missed the target. We need one of these guys. We've already got one sitting right flanking. next to the boat. On the move. They're flanking us. Drachnon, do a headshot. Take this one out. Mafatu, shoot the one in front of the Bodok. You missed! Oh, damn it! Shima Sanchez. Give it a mind fray. Vexadon. Give it a mind fray. Your nightmare is just starting. And the Bodok. Arc thrower. Subduing target. And there's a captured Tell heavy floater. We're bringing home a live one. And that leaves this one here. Let's do a run and gun. Get right up here next to it. There we go.
Oh, you missed the second shot. I don't see what he does. Grenade, it looks like. Doesn't do much beyond damage the armor. Captain K. Finish him off. X-ray neutralized. So far, an excellent mission. Let's get these guys to new cover. We've captured our heavy floater. We're gonna reload the snipers. Rock and roll. Mafatu needs a reload as well. Ready to rock. We're green to go. Now let's begin the next round. And it looks like it is time for us to head into the UFO. So we're going to land the snipers. Jetpack on deck. And begin our approach. Jetpack on deck. Captain K. Ready to engage. Seamus Sanchez. Now I would also very much like to capture an ethereal which we should find on this ship. a difficult and risky task, but we need one. Drachnon? Let's dash you forward. Mafatu. No sign of resistance within the UFO as of yet. on for the win. Captain K. Dash you to this little corner. Seamus Sanchez, you can take this middle point. It's killing time. Hello. We are here with your Thin Mints. Or do you prefer tagalongs to Quiet. the thin mints? Did you hear something? I hate to do it, I'm going to leave you out in the open. Quiet! Did you hear something? Let's do this side first. No alien contacts. No 
nobody on this side either. So we'll get ready for the next set of doors. Start over here again. Shima Sanchez, open the door. Nothing. They're usually in this little room. The Bodok. And they also see nothing. We need the Bodok front and center, ready to stun. Draknon. Want you right here. Mifatu. Vexadon for the win. And... Captain K. Usually an ethereal. Ooh! Shut up. We've got something outside the UFO still. Well, let's go ahead and deal with this first. Usually an ethereal with a. Still sectoid commanders. That's right, we haven't done the Outsider UFO yet. I'm getting all mixed up. Well, we have no reason to worry about trying to capture these. Just kill them. 50% chance to kill us. These kids follow target again. Draknon, can you see one? Yes. 51% chance to hit. Go ahead and do a headshot and see if you can't one-shot him. Nice shot, Draknon. And you have earned a promotion. Mifatu, open the door. Let's see here. Captain K. Give him to you. Hostiles pacified. Mission accomplished. And that was it. A good mission. Took a little damage from a grenade, but the armor should have soaked all of it. Which means no worries. So let's see if we've got... We know we Draconon at least earned a promotion. Let's see if anybody else did. Certainly not leaving any question as to our ability to fight the alien threat. Excellent work all around, Commander. Draknon and Shima Sanchez earn promotions. Draknon, now a lieutenant, disabling shot. Because the battle scanner, as I've said often, is useless. Shima Sanchez. I like Rocketeer. I like having the extra rocket. Excellent work, Commander. Capturing the alien subjects alive allows for a much wider range of experimentation versus the expired specimens. And we got 33 weapon fragments. So we can start some new research, I believe. I think... Do I go heavy plasma or do I go alloy cannon? Let's go heavy plasma. Well, first... Before, that's, well, before we do any of that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. I want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Please like, favorite, subscribe. Throw any feedback you might have into the comments below. 
If you'd like to join XCOM, please sign up in the comments below and I will work you in in a future playthrough. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again next time.